Hi everyone, welcome. I'm down here in my wormery, and as you can see, I've already got one of my worm bins out here on the bench, all set to go. I was just noticing how filthy this one is. Compared to most of my systems, this thing's got cobwebs and debris stuck to it, all kinds of filth. What is going on here? <laughs> well, can I also see that I've got a couple bin guardians here. One of them's over here in this little cobweb. And I don't know where, I thought I saw another one right there. So we got ourselves a couple little spiders hanging out here, I guess capitalizing on the comings and goings of insects. So I thought I was doing pretty good actually as far as cleaning up my flying insect situation, but these spiders might know something I don't. There's another spider, another one, or is it the same little guys? I don't know, it's hard to tell. Well, we're going to shoo them off this piece of paper just for long enough for, that we could uh, come on in here, see how the last feeding's doing. The last feeding the system received was, uh, here we go, got it all written down here on one of my little fancy information boards. It's been 17 days, so about two and a half weeks since the system was last fed, and the system is now receiving its 11th feeding today. So that last feeding it got 17 days ago was its 10th feeding. The age of the system is 143 days of age, and the origin of these worms is my compost barrel. So it's not every day I do a harvest of my compost barrel, but about seven months ago I did. And when I bought in all the material that to me looked like almost finished castings, I knew it was full of worms. That's where all these worms came from. And then even after the castings were left to sit around for a while, I harvested, not, I don't know if it's harvesting, I collected the babies, I rounded up all the baby worms I could from the finished castings, assuming that that, that had been kind of functioning as a, a worm nursery or a cocoon nursery. Sometimes all this large chunk debris that sort of floats out on the top surface makes things look a little sloppy. Sometimes I like to sort of get it out of the way so I can get a better sense of how things are doing. The worms will just keep nibbling away and breaking down everything they can, but what they can't, they just pass by it and it just sits there. And if it's on the surface, it doesn't even get a lot of moisture or anything like that, so it ends up semi-neglected sitting out on the surface, unfortunately. So that's all really great stuff that's perfect for bedding and putting it right underneath your latest feeding, and I think that's exactly what we'll do with this stuff. And you know, we'll do the same with this feeding zone indicator. This is my um, way of showing myself, if you remember, it was sitting right here in the middle showing us where we last fed, kind of guiding us back to where we last fed. And my typical feeding pattern is down the middle, so I wouldn't have a hard time figuring that out. But, you know, after you scrape everything away, there's really no other sign of worm activity here. So you wouldn't be able to tell there's no recess. You know, I don't think it was a very large feeding. If we had loaded that feeding area up big time um, last time, then, we, you know, we'd see a big cavity there. But it looks kind of level. It doesn't look like there's a whole lot going on here. And, you know, if you think about it, a system that has um, an estimated population of less than 1,500 worms, which is, which is kind of what we arrived at together, our guess is that how many worms occupy this place. That's not that many worms. Although they're doing a great job, you know. system looks really nice. All the castings are beautiful. I guess just general checking of the surface material feels kind of damp. We had only that piece of newspaper, no, not even newspaper, paper bag. There was a piece of paper bag covering things here. Then helping that was just the feeding zone indicator right below it. But not a whole lot was covering the system. Nowadays, it doesn't seem like it takes a whole lot to keep the moisture right down within the system. Now that the air is kind of humid, when my heater's going in the winter time, all the time, the furnace, the blowers, you know, pushing that air all around the house, and things get really dry. But now that all the humid, warm summer air is coming in, it's quite the opposite. The humidity in the air actually prevents the moisture from leaving the system. And it's pretty easy to let things get too damp this time of year if you're not careful. That's what I've been really kind of paranoid about and overly concerned about. Let me get a little container we can empty this materials into, get it out of our way. I'd like to dig down, but I don't want to mix all this stuff in. This would be nice stuff to use as bedding for our feeding. The feeding that we've got for them, it's some stuff that uh, contributed by my mom. It's not even been frozen. I just bought it from my mom. This is the coffee out of the coffee maker. Just some other little fragments of this and that. I've also got a brand new mix of worm chow. 
stuff that no worms have tasted yet because I just made it yesterday and haven't used it for feeding yet. I've also got my pulverized eggshell collection here. We'll use it as grit, as a supplement to today's feeding. So let the fun begin. Let's see how things are looking in here. Last feeding would have been down the middle. From what I remember, it wasn't the sort of stuff that's going to stick around for long. So we might not see many leftovers. A lot of worms <laughs> in this first corner that we just kind of randomly decided to go check in on. It's always nice to see. I don't see many leftovers of any sort of bedding or food scraps so far. Here's a little something. You know, if you find shells, pits, stems, certain things are going to just show up as leftovers. Completely normal. Now I'm kind of traversing the middle area, which is where we know we fed last. So I'm already seeing signs of cantaloupe melon. So very thin sheets of the tough outer piece of the rind. Everything else has been nibbled clean. Good number of worms kind of hanging out there, enjoying that little piece of leftovers. But you know what? Might as well include that in our little co collection of stuff over here. Not sure how much more we're going to find in here. Maybe a few, a few more cantaloupe rind skins as leftovers. I don't know if we've fed anything else that's kind of slower composting. It's just like a little piece of bedding or whatever. So, yeah, I'm not looking to do some sort of major collection of large bits, but um, I figured this stuff would make as like a good foundation to f drop today's feeding into. It also seems like maybe a nice healthy dose of bedding for these guys would be a, a welcome addition too. Because I, I see lots and lots of castings, but virtually no bedding. And if we did add bedding with the last feeding, I'm guessing we probably did. I'm not seeing any signs of it piece of cantaloupe it was like the very end of it there and here we got just a few little pieces of what appears to be some shredded paper maybe or maybe leftover bits of food very very busy looking bin from what I can tell I guess we're kind of getting to the end of what would have made up the feeding area like here's another example of a pit you know what I mentioned earlier those slow composting things these sort of things will end up in your worm bin. They'll just pretty much sit there. <laughs> I usually don't have the patience to watch them finish. So I usually just pull them out when I see them. Seems like a waste to have them floating around, wasting space. Not that there's a problem with that. Very nice. Here and there I see a little scrap of paper. Makes me wonder why it didn't break down. My best guess at why is just because it was nested up against or resting up against something and prevented worms from accessing it. But when we feed, I guess we'll just dump it right down the middle. But now I'm kind of curious, since we've already inspected so much of the bin, might as well finish the rest of it too. Very much the same as what we saw elsewhere. Lots and lots of worms all over the place. Here and there I just stumble on something that feels like a clumpy chunk of something, maybe a little bit over overly damp clump of paper bits with some castings sticking together but other than a very few examples of that I think this stuff is really nice very high moisture content believe it or not you've been seeing me move this stuff around like if it was sand dry sand but it's it's got a really good moisture content to it that's for sure I'm sure these worms are extremely content to be in this stuff so let's finish this inspection. This is quite a busy bin. If I were to look back at that number on the board that I've got over there, I would definitely have to say that that's an underestimated worm count. And we always establish our worm counts when we build our bins and launch our bins. In the case of this bin, that was many months ago. So the fact that they've had time to reproduce, make themselves at home, increase their numbers is usually a you know, pretty, pretty good explanation as to why you're seeing so many worms compared to what you think you started with or compared to what you know you started with. You're definitely going to see an increase for sure. And it is kind of exciting to watch. But I think we're, um, I think we're good to go on aerating the material. It always feels good to be able to aerate the stuff up a little bit, especially when it feels kind of damp. And even when you start sensing little chunks of stuff that almost seem like they're clumping together potentially because of excess moisture times like that I feel like a good tilling up and aeration of the material is like just what the doctor ordered so I think this was due and 
necessary and is going to help prevent material from clumping and getting nasty. So, all right. This is definitely one of those types of bins you can really get lost in in terms of just fawning over it and gazing into each handful and seeing how many worms there are. I mean, they're everywhere and there are lots of them and they look really happy and healthy. And we're going to give them some food. So, we got ourselves a nice opening down the middle here. I've got to go grab, grab my little collection of bedding for these little guys and then we're going to get them fed. So at first I went reaching for my collection of ready-made bedding material. But that stuff's got a pretty good moisture content. I really kind of like the idea of going with some sort of a dry feeding and like the foods that they're getting, yeah, cucumber, all the juicy parts been saved and fed to humans. All this is just the skin. So I don't think there's a lot of moisture content there and these coffee grinds, no moisture there as well as the dry worm chow. Oops. So I think with this type of a feeding, we can maybe drive moisture levels in here a little bit downwards um, by just placing in materials that are already going in dry. So I did sort of um, switch gears there. I thought I'd be giving them some of my ready-made bedding, but I think this seems like just as good a solution. They're going to enjoy this just as much, I believe. Well, my ready-made bedding is kind of seasoned, includes leaves. It's a really nice mix. So yeah, the worms probably do enjoy that even better than anything else as far as my bedding options go but this is pretty good too so what else we're not going to just pile it all in we're going to mix it all up so we'll start getting into some layers here maybe a handful of cucumber bits drop in about half the bag save the rest for another layer we could bring in coffee and as long as we're including a day's worth of coffee with its filter we can go right for the oops we can go right for the um the coffee filter that had been used previously as our feeding zone indicator and get that into the feeding zone now as food and bedding rather than just sitting out on top as a indicator to show us where we last fed all right and then there was all this other really fine stuff in here too which we can get in here but before we proceed let's give them a little bit of grit a little bit of worm chow. Very nice. My new worm chow is going to um, hopefully go over well. It's um, got a few new ingredients in it. Stuff that I've never used before. I pulled out a box of old cornstarch that I had in the uh, cupboard. So that got mixed in. I went with some... Let's see. There was one other thing I remember. Birdseed. Yeah, birdseed was the big thing that I really wanted to include in my next batch. And this includes birdseed, which is pretty awesome. Which I think they're going to like a lot too. But, well, I hope, you know, we'll see. I, I hope they like it. So here's some of this nice seasoned stuff that we can start reintroducing. Mostly cantaloupe rinds. And some bro other broken down materials. I don't know if we need to go with much more grit. That's a pretty generous portion of grit we've already given them. And, well, yeah, we've still got less, less, the last of this cucumber here. Make sure that's been fed. And the last of the coffee. This is quite a good size feeding, I must say. Perhaps more than I expected. And I'm glad I made a nice big hole opening to <laughs> put it all into, otherwise we'll be overflowing here. This is that really, really thin paper that they wrap toilet paper rolls in. Stuff seems to break down pretty quickly feels like our space is running out here in our hole. Maybe this last piece of newspaper that I bought out here can just sort of sit out on top. Kind of help out that top covering piece of paper that looks like paper bag or whatever. Or what is it? Yeah, it's like fast food bag. Maybe we'll put it out here on top as sort of a little helper since we don't really need to see a whole lot of drying going on in here since what we're doing here does seem to be like an active um, drying tactic method or whatever putting in dry materials that you know is going to suck up some of the moisture from the surrounding stuff so since we already do anticipate a little bit of drying due to that 
it does seem to make sense to you know maybe cover up add that extra layer of paper not much but definitely enough to probably prevent um, further evaporation and wow this stuff is so damp it's so weird when you touch it I'm sure it doesn't appear that way when you're looking at it just as you know video footage or maybe it does I don't know I guess we'll see when we get the footage onto the computer and start editing but yeah when I'm touching this stuff it, it feels way damp <laughs> so the dry stuff we put in there will suck up some moisture we'll we'll try to see what that does you know instead of trying to do multiple things to suddenly try to dry things here I don't think we're at like a danger zone or a tipping point that means we're you know so damp that things are gonna suddenly go bad if we don't take drastic action I think things are really actually quite nice in here probably very comfortable for the worms I'm sure they're enjoying it so um, I think we're pretty much done here all we've got to do is get this new sheet of paper that we were going to use as bedding but now we're just going to use it as a little bit of extra top covering to help out that fast food paper bag that was resting on top as our top covering as you can see it already has a hole punched through it nibbled through it whatever it is that happened there I don't know but you know in time it's probably going to keep withering if we don't protect it from the onslaught of worms coming up from below to nibble on it this way they can nibble on the newspaper maybe this bag will last a little bit longer we'll see all right everyone that's it for today's video hopefully you enjoyed it if you did as always please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go and if you haven't done so already please also consider subscribing to the channel all right everyone have a great day thanks so much for watching Bye bye